Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain Konami learned something. So in this video, I'm just going to be talking about um, Konami's learned something. And essentially, I'll just be covering the things that I feel this now that they've learned about the game. And the things that they're doing that are just an uh, admittance of defeat and admittance of change. But that doesn't mean they can't do more. Anyways, let's go to these three things that I've seen that they're doing right now. After the last talk we've had with um, Konami Learn Something in part one. You can check that in the description or in the pinned comment. Let's continue. One, acknowledging combo. Two, improving communication. And three, standardizing. One, acknowledging combo. Indeed, with Infinite Forbidden coming out in a few months' time and them releasing a card called Multimami, I think this is straight up admittance that combo in Yu-Gi-Oh is a problem. That's kind of the truth! Um, special summoning is a problem. That this is full admittance that we need to do something about advantage. We need to do something about just straight up just the mess that we've put ourselves in. And I think they know this. This is full acknowledgement. When you read um, Pirelia's effect, the fact that this is a balanced uh, maxi, the fact that it is being released in the first place is full acknowledgement that combo is a problem, that we have made a mistake and we need to address it. Because why else would you release a card like this? It is of a sense of admitting your mistake and admitting your faults here. Now, this is really good for the game. Pirelia is good for the game. And the best thing about Pirelia is it's a sort of card that you can eat your cake and have it. More different versions of this same card are good. Currently, Pirelia only targets normal summoning and special summoning from the hand. But if we had different versions, as it implies they're going to release more with the way it's worded, um, we could have one for different extra deck mechanics, one for link summoning, another for synchro summoning, another for fusion summoning, another one for synchro summoning, then another one for ritual summoning. You get the general idea. We can essentially have a different Torelia hand trap for the different types of summons we have in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Not only, and just have the same wording, but just rinse, uh, just replace that whole thing. One, this solves two problems that Yu-Gi-Oh has, which is obviously the combo side of things and the hand trap situation. Now with Yu-Gi-Oh, the hand trap situation is getting, is, we can acknowledge, I think it also needs to be acknowledged that it's getting out of control. Um, definitely with the playstyle that we see with um, Tempai, right? While it's great that this is one of the first decks that Konami's made that you can go second with, the playstyle that it has that you have to put like 25 hand traps into the deck, that is definitely not a playstyle that is healthy or good for the game. Um, that, that level of just obnoxiousness is just absolutely disgusting, right? And we definitely should not be doing that ever. So, that's generally it. Um, yeah, so overall, there's not really much to say here. Just say that Combo is being acknowledged. This card is being released in a few months' time, Porelia. And hope and I hopefully we could see more versions of the same card for different summon mechanics, which is as I said, fusion, synchro, XYZ, pendulum ritual, link, you get the general idea. And it could be a way to just curb just the silliness and craziness that Yu-Gi-Oh has become. Two, improving communication. Indeed, this is the case. So when I talk about improving communication, so far, um, Konami this year has really shown that they can do it, that they can communicate with the player base. 
facts. Um, even if it is to troll us, when um, we saw that with them talking about Trident Dragion, right? Um, that was definitely a huge troll. But the point is that we ha we actually got some co some kind of communication. Um, they actually informed us, you know, for the first time ever in TCG, why the ban list was late. So definitely, we we we're seeing some sort of we're seeing some improvement here. Improvements are always good, and this is something that I think should continue. Um, they should obviously. I'd like to see this continue, and it should continue, as I mentioned about this in my Let's Explain Yu-Gi-Oh Problems Part Two. But anyways, the point that I'm trying to make here is that we hope anyway um, that they continue on this trend of improving communication and we can get to just a level playing field in terms of communication and where we don't get the silent treatment. Okay, um, better communication can definitely improve Yu-Gi-Oh going forward. Not really much to say here, but that's about it. Three standardizing so what do i mean by this well first of all a few weeks ago konami issued out a rule saying that they're going to ban some cringe what do i mean by cringe what i mean by cringe is is that we've had a small part of our community that go to tournaments with some very um risque mats or risk you know it's very um dubious mats dubious stuff that are just completely uh, inappropriate to take out um, to official tournaments. Um, and they're, they're based on anime. Now, now this is something I believe Konami is doing the right thing. And yes, the other side of the argument here, which is completely valid, they should just continue what they're doing now. They should just ban those particular players. But again, I think while that's all very well and good and all, that's what they've been doing in the past. And it's just a repeat offender. We have just, we continue to break this these terms of service. We have continued to, as players, right, be entitled and completely just balls to the wall, just abuse this system abuse their kindness and i think it is about time they put the hammer down and just say no you need to get a life as soon as possible we're not going to take it and i think this is a step in the right direction for the game while yes is it going to hurt us as players absolutely is it going to hurt third party players uh, third party as well absolutely is it going to hurt you youtubers absolutely but at the end of the day right we knew the players who did this knew what they were doing that it was wrong. They knew that this was breaking terms of service. Everyone involved knew this and something that would come eventually. S would have come, if not now, would have come in the future, would have come a few years from now. At the end of the day, if you keep abusing something so much, rules will come down to just penalize, to penalize that whole thing and just remove the benefit that it had for everyone else. So let this be sort of a learning curve for us as a community to just not abuse the kindness that we have i think this is this is down to us as the players we were we we were are uh, really abusing this we were really um the the small group of us that was just degenerate have spoiled it for the ones who weren't degenerate and i feel uh, standardizing also does another thing for you Gyo, that which hasn't happened before is it just makes things easier to follow if standardizing can continue to the the card layout, to the rules, and things like that, the game can be better for it. Standardizing doesn't have to end with just, um, you know, these of the banning of cringe. We could extend that further to card design, um, making sure that when we're formatting cards, when we're designing cards, when Konami is designing cards, that they're standardized and they're easy to understand. Or that the layout is just done in a, in a, in a great and fantastic way. Okay, we could follow the OCG layout here. Standardizing has a big implication as to how we can make this game accessible for new players, right? And so definitely I would like standardizing to continue because it has big implications for Yu-Gi-Oh! 
it can only the only thing it can do is improve the game and in the in the long term and just make it so that we can get more players into this game there's no negatives that standardizing brings to Yu-Gi-Oh, right whereas the other points that i've mentioned definitely they need to be fine fine-tuned with communication that needs some fine-tuning that definitely needs um we need to go back and forth with konami with that same thing to do with the other first point that i mentioned but with standardizing the more it is done the everyone benefits from this we as players benefit because when we go into official tournaments it's going to be easier to play the game because again we know that you just use this kind of match we know this is what we're supposed to do. We know this is how we're supposed to play. Um, it benefits everyone because then events are much quicker to handle. We're not sitting there for like some stupid amount of hours. And just everyone is happier in the long term. Everybody wins. Let's get to the overall conclusion. Well, with the overall conclusion, it's that... With these three points that I've mentioned, and what are these three points that I've mentioned? Um, the acknowledging of combo, the improving of communication, and standardizing. With those three points, essentially, those are the things that, we can, that I can see right now that Konami is doing at the moment, currently, to improve the game. And so far, I think the one thing we can say that they're doing really is the really doing heavily is um i would say is the acknowledging of combo i think this is something that is being addressed all the time every time we're getting more going second cars that are coming out into the game more and more often um we are they are standardizing effects meaning that they're printing out more cars that just search and while this standardizing of effects might um, might seem a little bit stupid to us, might seem a little bit crazy, like why are we releasing a lot of searches, why are we releasing a lot of cards that just search, that just make decks really, really consistent, that make decks really, really the same. I think part of the reason for this, in my uh, honest opinion, is that if things are standardized, if effects are the same, then when it comes to the ban list again, it makes it much easier to hit these decks, to hit like these big decks. I think part of the reason when we when we saw T-Elements, right? T-Elements was an example of how do we hit this deck? Um, this deck can just do everything at once because everything ha is a consistency. Everything just adds consistency. Everything just does that. If you understand what I'm if you understand what I'm saying, but with obviously if we see Snake Eyes, right? We know instantly as players, and again, we can see the play, uh, the the gameplay loop. Um, everyone can see the gameplay loop. We know what card is really a problem. We know which card needs to go. And when you have the thing is, is that when you have co you make consistency cards, right, it gets easier to balance out what you need to hit so first of all it just clear it makes the ban list much easier right as we can see with tcg that they knew exactly what to do are you serious so much expectations yet it flopped okay they banned the um the ex the the end boards right but did they ban the deck internally itself in snake eyes absolutely not that's where you're wrong so, yeah. Anyways, that's coming to the first point of acknowledging combo. Um, our second point with improving uh, communication is that that is it being improved. I think we've just started. Obviously, this year is just a, is an attempt. I think from Konami, whoever has had the whatever PR change or whatever internal change has happened, let that said, we need to communicate with the players more. We need to um not just give them the silent treatment. I think this was a fantastic decision and I think this needs to continue. Um, you know, it doesn't need to be crazy. They don't have to tell us everything, but just the basic, the basic, you know, common amount 
definitely basic decency is what every other card game does um just follow that template and then finally you know we have the standardizing that i've said before well obviously their own mats or their own sleeves etc 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 but i think at the end of the day um the issue why it's it's been done is that we have a small minority of us players who were abusing it and just taking some very um dubious mats some very um risque mats we'll just say to these events that they knew um definitely that those are those are mats that you should or you should only have in your room or in your safe space as well as i'll just call it now to just keep this uh, conversation pg and you know and they knew that those are things that you you definitely don't take out in a public setting it's just about just common respect and common decency and definitely having decency in a public area out of respect i'm going to just um give a clap to konami and i'm all for it right um it's a sacrifice i am willing to make if if the sacrifice means that you know third party can't we as a we can't have third party uh mats third party sleeves we can't have those custom stuff then i say so be it because at the end of the day this is something that this is a price that we have to pay because if we if we as a community are going out here you know the small part of our community going out here bringing risque mats just bringing dodgy mats that are just clearly not for a public setting and are just disrespecting just the arena disrespecting the public area that you know we have you know it's it's not the fact that these mats that are lewd that's not the point we all everyone likes lewd stuff guys like lewd stuff but the fact is that it is a public setting right if you want to do that do it do it at home do it where no one is looking you don't need to share your your craziness or your wildness with everyone else okay um there's a time and place for all these things anyways that's all i've got to say about this we come to the end of this video so as i like to say you were one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.